So uh, thanks everybody for this really exciting conference and for giving me the chance to present a paper that it's not uh, already published, but uh, we hope to make it soon. So uh, the idea is to study in a statistical way the molecular gas scaling relations uh, to compare the, the field to the clusters. And so the work uh, has been done mostly in collaboration with my collaborators, uh, uh, Lucia Rodriguez Munoz and and uh, uh, Georgios Magdis. And uh, the bulk of the work includes uh, uh, the Herschel survey, the, sorry, the Herschel sources from the Herschel Lansing survey and the uh, team of uh, Aichegami. So the basic idea is to understand uh, all what has been said today and in the previous days of this conference about the effect of uh, star formation related to the environment. And so we all know that uh, the two main, uh, let's say, uh, observational trend uh, agree with with what is still debating reality, the, the evidence of evolu evolutionary um, average star formation rate as a function of the local galaxy densities. So this was called, introduced by David Del Baz some time ago, as the reversal of the star formation rate densities. So uh, recently confirmed by Brian Lemot in, uh, in the Woods fields in the Cosmos and other um, fields at high redshift. So basically, go into high redshift, the star formation rate in the course of the highest density peaks is on average higher than in the field, which is really opposite of what happens in the local universe. The other interesting fact, which is most related to this conference, is that if we look at the cosmic star formation rate densities, which is uh, uh, the average trend is a uh, here, but if you look really on a large dynamical scale, we do see that clusters and the protocluster in the high ratchet really live uh, in uh, an unsaid uh, cosmic volume. So the cosmic star formation rate, which might be due to high star formation in the single galaxies, but also to the uh, highest number of sources in a given volume, really uh, tells us that uh, the behavior in the systems is different than in the local uh, universe. And this is also predicted by uh, simulation, we have seen this picture of, of, of already in the conference, that really uh, high ratchet protocluster can contribute a high fraction of the, of the star formation rate density. So why I'm saying all these, uh, which is uh, already known, is because most of this is related to the modulation of quenching as a function of the environment in different uh, epochs and in different uh, locations, which is uh, uh, at the end related to the reservoir of gas in gas galaxies sitting in different, uh, uh, in different, let's say, cities or towns. So uh, I thought it was useful at that time to make a statistical, as much as possible, statistical comparable comparison of scaling relations, including the usual stellar mass star formation rate, but in particular the gas fractions and the gas depletion times also as a function of the distance to the main sequence using a complete sample of sources, which is not what we have uh, in, uh, in, single, uh, in single works. But uh, uh, just a brief summary that uh, this topic uh, is, uh, has already been covered by other um, co-authors by other authors, sorry, like the work by Ben Darvish, Ben Darvish, who showed in Cosmos that if you look at the gas mass fraction uh, and the depletion time of sources in different uh, locations in different densities, there is basically no difference with respect to galaxies in the in the in the field, which is was uh, was also shown by Andra uh, a while ago. And so also Gianluca Castignani, who showed uh, a bit more in the real protoclast in the real cluster, so in the extreme peaks of the star formation rate uh, environment that uh, really, if you compare again uh, field to clusters, the average uh, uh, gas fraction, even assuming different prescription, pres prescription for the alpha CO to convert uh, the, the gas emissions into a mass, uh, sorry, the CO emission into a mass, does not show uh, statistical differences. Anyway, uh, it was the time to put together uh, many information that are spread uh, along the literature with complementary data from our Herschel Lansing survey and other Herschel programs who derived uh, the far infrared counterpart of cluster members uh, up to Ratchet 1.5 and from which we can derive uh, the, star the, sorry, the gas mass from dust 
continuum. So I'm not going into the details of the single uh, uh, data set that uh, I can um, more details into the Slack channel. But let's say that what I think, as I have written here, is that uh, uh, this, uh, this sample likely represent a combination of sources that uh, uh, look like uh, a current uh, luminosity selected star formation rate selected sample so to put all together uh, the low redshift uh, cluster member which is here it's redshift against stellar mass gas mass and star formation rate if you compare the red points uh, open or filled uh, uh, which are cluster members so it's really sources on top of the highest density peaks it's not uh, a different uh, uh, there is no variation of the density of, of the local density at least in principle compared to field galaxies from Phoebs and from Sarget smart Sarget in in black you do see that uh, in the three main parameters they uh, more or less uh, occupy an, a uniform uh, uh, coverage in the parameter space, which is essential to really understand uh, if our sample is biased to our particular um, parameter space. So uh, just to say that uh, uh, the filled circles uh, represent sources from which the gas mass is derived from CO, while the empty uh, squares are from dust continuums, which we, 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 we check uh, that are consistent. consistent. So uh, the main result, uh, it's uh, already in this picture where we show the gas star formation rate relation of cluster versus field, which let's say it's uh, a um, uh, it's basically uh, a version of the schmidt kennicott uh, uh, law. So we recover uh, what we know, which is uh, star formation against mass for the field sources, as I said, the FIBS uh, and, uh, and other compilations that sits mostly in the, in the locus of spiral galaxies uh, or what uh, is also defined as, as the main sequence relations for the schmidt kennicott law, while the Euler starburst region is most uh, uh, offset here. And uh, uh, the main result here is that you really show that uh, if you split at least in redshift below redshift 1.8 and above redshift 1.8, we do see that the cluster sources, uh, these are the spirals in Virgo and up to the intermediate redshift, do, uh, do show a, a, a really narrow uh, distribution, which was uh, uh, not expected to me. And, uh, uh, the, the, and if you fit uh, independently on the feet of the field, uh, the scaling relation in this case for cluster galaxies, we do see exactly that we found in the red line uh, the same slope as the field galaxies, but with an offset uh, toward higher uh, gas masses, so uh, short, longer depletion time, which is an offset of 0.25 dex, more or less. And uh, the, the splitting in redshift is because there is a kind of bimodal behavior above redshift 1.8, uh, more or less, uh, which is the fact that uh, if we start to enter really in the epoch of the school protoclusters, the spread uh, is much larger. So this may be part to the selection of the cluster, but let's see that really the scatter combining all together increases. So uh, the result is that uh, field and cluster galaxies uh, seems to show the same scaling relation, at least let's say up to redshift two, but uh, tower a longer depletion time at fixed star formation rate. So uh, we can interpret this kind of uh, uh, longer depletion time, which is the same as a uh, lower self-formation rate efficiency uh, below redshift 1.8 as really a signature of environment quenching that can take place at this epoch. We don't know if these cluster members are all in falling galaxies since they are really uh, highly star forming galaxies in general because they are detected in the infrared uh, in the CO. So we, ha we, ha we have to check this. So uh, this is also consistent with the prediction of Shimakawa, where really the, uh, the quenching, the declining phase is below redshift 2. And so the final uh, couple of minutes, uh, I have uh, made another version of uh, this plot uh, showing that uh, uh, since for each of these uh, uh, sample of cluster, we know the stellar mass, the star formation rate and the redshift, we also have a measure of the, uh, by definition of the, of the gas mass, we can predict what is the expected uh, gas mass, uh, the gas fractions and uh, the depletion times as compared to the scaling relation 
platforms that uh, are commonly used in the in the field. There are many versions, of course, of uh, uh, in the literature of scanning relation. We have used here the Tacconi 18, but uh, things are robust and again also other uh, compilations of scaling relations. So this is the last uh, the last slide. We do see that uh, if on the top we show the gas fraction, so this mu m gas over stellar mass and the depletion time below, again split it in redshift, and we coded all the distribution as a function of the distance to the main sequence as an offset in specific star formation rate, we do confirm previous results that most of the sources sit on the, on the main sequence. If we define star bars, let's say a uh, factor four above the main sequence, this is just, uh, you can use your favorite uh, selections. Uh, most of the sources follow what is predicted, uh, in particular below redshift uh, 1.8. The only offset that we found is that above the main sequence, let's say on the bright side of the main sequence, we still confirm an excess of 0.25 dex. So the result here is that uh, the environment quenches is mostly affecting actively star forming cluster galaxies that sits above the main sequence, but still on the main sequence, even if uh, uh, star bars are present in these clusters. So I go to the results. I think it was interesting to assemble a statistical sample of cluster member to probe the highest density peak uh, members uh, in uh, across uh, a a wider range of ratchet between 0 and 2.5. And we found really that the bulk of the object uh, live on the main sequence. Uh, we found that the schmidt kennicott is uh, uh, an onset tower longer depletion times uh, above uh, below ratchet 1.8, which seems to also uh, go in the opposite direction as uh, uh, the SPT uh, topic of yesterday have shown where at Redshift 4, you have really uh, much shorter depletion time. So we will see in the future if uh, uh, the nature of the sources can be better highlighted. And I will take questions here or on the Slack. Thank you.